Hey gents, today we're going to talk about Jack Threads, which was a members only contemporary fashion discount site for men. They started in 2008, they grew incredibly quickly, and now by 2017 they appear to be shutting down entirely. So we are going to dive into that. You guys have been asking me to take a look at Jack Threads from a clothing standpoint for several months, but then a few weeks ago when Aaron Marino posted a video about his Jack Threads experience and some of the issues they were having, it seemed like something fishy was going on. Before we jump in, make sure you subscribe to my channel. I cover the best menswear on the internet and all of the brands that are worth our time time and money. Thumbs up if you like these videos on more industry analysis and at the end let me know what you like down in the comments. As we start here, I do just want a disclaimer. I don't know anybody with Jack Threads. I'm not connected to anybody with Jack Threads. I don't know any of the inside details of what happened there. My day job is within the corporate retail industry, so I'm trying to now take what the information is that is out there on the web, combine it with my industry knowledge, and try to paint a good picture of what happened. If somebody were to reach out to me from Jack Threads after this goes up, or there's some additional information I could acquire, I'm not a journalist by any means, but I would try to do my best to report this story because it's something you guys are, are pretty interested in and so taking that stuff that's out there already combining it with my knowledge and giving you a picture that's what this video is all about jack threads was started in 2008 by jason ross out of columbus ohio and if you don't know about columbus ohio's ties to the retail industry check them out it's the mid-tier retail capital of the world, United States specifically, especially. It started as a members only discount site. Discount retailers were always somewhat popular. Think TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Ross. But you have to remember the macro environment at that time, 08 to 2010, going through a recession in the US. And so more than ever, people were looking for deals, not just guys looking for deals, but you know, your girlfriend might be buying you stuff, your wife buying you stuff. And so that's when these sites like Guilt Group and Jack Threads were really booming because people were looking for great deals. So you take the recession, the rise of the member site, the growing popularity of online retail and in May of 2010 Thrillist acquired Jack Threads because you were seeing an astronomical rise in sites like Guilt, Groupon, Fab, Living Social. All of these sites that were offering these deals had huge member bases that were moving a lot of inventory and I could do a whole video on the way that you know Jack Threads and other companies were moving through inventory. Same thing with Guilt Group. That's a whole separate topic but at the highest level if a company or a retailer had a lot of excess inventory at the end of a season which back then they especially did because of the recession instead of trying to move through the inventory through their own discount channels and markdowns, they would sell all of the inventory to a site like Jack Threads. So they'd buy 1,000 t-shirts instead of the MSRP being $29, Jack Threads would get them for like $4.50 and then sell them to you for $10. So that would be their profit. But then you'd also get that huge discount off the MSRP, which is how you were seeing prices 50 to 80% off, which is what Jack Threads always advertise for the deals they were giving to their members. Now that gives them a lot of buying power also because they have guaranteed audience and guaranteed sales. And so it was a combination of the data that Jack Threads could provide for the types of sales that they could give. And then also on top of that, having the people that were chopping at the bit to really get these deals on the pretty good close. Basically the overstock.com model applied to menswear. Now Thrillist acquired Jack Threads for two reasons. They have strong relationships and growth potential. So the relationships one, like I was just mentioning, they have a huge customer base. Jack Threads, the stat that you see all over the place was they went from 50,000 subscribers to 1.8 million subscribers over the course of two years. Crazy growth for that. And that connection with the customers is extremely valuable. So when they acquired it, they were at 1 million subscribers. Second is the relationship with the brands and the retailers that Jack Threads was acquiring the inventory from. So the model they had was not that unique, but it really they had the customers and they had the retailers which solves the chicken and egg problem is how do you get inventory if you don't have customers? How do you get customers if you don't have inventory? So they had solved that problem. I also believe the Thrillist acquisition is the first sign of trouble for the company because the valuation they were looking at, it looked more of a technology play than a retail play. Really though, they're just a retailer. And at that point, they were getting a much higher valuation because people saw them as this uh, crazy new tech company while they were just hawking clothing like the rest of the retailers out there. And so that starts to spell trouble for the acquisition overall. Now the two reasons, relationships and then growth potential, in 2010 to 2012, Jack Threads was growing by 20% month over month and that is because they had this huge influx of cash from Thrillist and that growth is not unheard of for a company but for a retailer that's really good and by this point in 2012 they were doing about $50 million in revenue which is pretty good for a small retail brand but it's still very young for a retail company. 2012 is when Thrillist takes on $13 million in funding in order to create a new 
Thrillist Media Group, and this is when you get an agency specifically dedicated to creating video content for Jack Threads for social channels and for their website. And this is likely when you heard of Jack Threads is that 2012 time period, because at that point, they just get a bunch of money, they dump it into social channels, they spread the word, and I think my first order from them was in 2011, and so that's about the time where you see a huge rise in the awareness of Jack Threads overall. A fundamental problem that these discount sites had is that they were differentiating solely based on the price that they could offer to the customer. The clothing that they were offering at huge discounts wasn't the highest quality, and so people were just coming to look for the deals, which means that another company could just spin up, offer lower prices, and then the customers migrate away from that company. I think that's why a site like Huckberry continues to do really well. They're not specifically focused on price while they do offer great deals. They're more about the curation of a great men's brand and then offering a better deal than most, but it's not a bargain basement site. They're using their membership numbers in order to leverage great deals with the brands, not buy out excess inventory and sell off low quality goods. Now in the context of Jack Threads shutting down, I would guess that you and I are in the same exact target audience which Jack Threads was going after, which is that 22 to about 40 year old guy who's looking to save some money, dress more like an adult, stop wearing your letterman jacket. The issue comes in for Jack Threads that the few times I ordered clothing from them, I got great deals. I paid like $18 for a dress shirt, but when I got it, it didn't really fit, it didn't look good. It only lasted for two or three of the times that I wore it. And so now my perception of Jack Threads is that I can go and get a great deal, but it's not going to last well. So now, five years later when I've aged into having a little bit more disposable income, looking to spend a little bit more on quality, I'm not going to go to back to Jack Threads because even if they have upgraded their service and upgraded their clothing, I'm not even going to take a look at them because I already ordered from them, I took the chance, it didn't really work out, and so there's another crack in the foundation. The name brand is already associated with bargain basement, low quality discount stuff, and so they have an uphill battle to go to try and recapture customers that they had already gained. But I'm getting slightly ahead of myself. While not financially or structurally linked to Guild Group, in 2012, Guild Group laid off like 90 people and their revenue started to drop by 10%. At this point, these flash sales were going up the hockey stick. So the fact that revenue dropped at all was shocking in 2012. This is when investors start to notice problems. Guild Group starts shutting down certain divisions of the group which weren't working, which was basically everything outside of men's and women's retail. And Jack Threads just started to kind of peak along with that market for discount sites. Between 2012 and 2015, they just kind of putter along. But then in 2015, Thrillist Media Group raised a huge $54 million. Now, it's huge for a retail company, it's pretty good for a media company, and it's kind of medium or low for a technology company. Especially because you have to assume that Jack Threads at that point was doing somewhere between 60 and $70 million, huge investment. Part of that transaction is the media group went off separately and the Jack Threads division was spun out into an independent company. And so it takes about a year to separate management boards and, and financials and everything else. So at this point, Jack Threads has to pivot off into its own independent company and flash sale sites have essentially disappeared. I mean, Groupon had an astronomical rise and now they are cut in half from their valuation. They burn bridges with profitable, higher spending customers like myself because I'm not in the deal site world anymore. I'm looking to pay for quality and value, which I think is what they tried to do in their pivot, which they tried to do in 2015, 2016. At that point, the subscription clothing models are really booming and so they try to hitch their wagon to there. The final nail in the coffin appears to be in October of 2016 when the Thrillist Media Group took on another $100 million in investment, which further separated the Thrillist and the Jack Threads groups. And so then Jack Threads was spun out as its own e-com company, whereas before it was still kind of under the umbrella of the Thrillist group. Now we're in February of 2017 and Jack Threads lays off most of its employees in preparation to cease operations as an independent company. This is about the time that Alpha M posts a video about Jack Threads and then customers go to his link. They essentially throw money into a black hole expecting clothing out of them. And I think that whole disconnect is because usually companies that would work with Alpha M work through an agency and then you have Jack Threads. So there was probably a disconnect between the agency who got the video with Alpha M and then the agency probably tried to bill Jack Threads for the marketing work and then the agency also found out that there was no Jack Threads anymore. Just a slow moving domino effect across all of those points from 
the layoff of employees to Air Marino's video, and then this is where we are at today. Jack Threads appears to be no more. The key here is that Jack Threads was founded and grew at the exact right time in the right place when flashlight sales were thought to be the next best thing and they had the investment money to fuel their expansion and growth, but it was not built on a sustainable model, which is what we've now witnessed over the past eight years. I don't think there's much brand equity left in the Jack Threads name, but don't be surprised if the website stays up or if you see another company swoop in, buy the assets, and try to revitalize the brand within a few years. It would be an entirely different team, so who knows what that might look like. There you have it, gents. That is my best approximation at what has happened to Jack Threads. Would be happy to acquire any more data that I could about the company and share it. I personally shopped there many years ago. Wasn't impressed with the clothing, but I did not try it again since they pivoted to that subscription model, which is when you guys were asking me to take a look at it. And so it's just one more company that you will see fall by the wayside. The, the fact of the matter is that, you know, 60% of retail companies that start don't end up making it. And so this was just one of them. Seems like you guys like these videos. I will keep doing them if you continue to like, subscribe, and support. Very thankful for all of that. Thank you to those who watched my Weekender video, suggested companies. And as always, I read every single comment that you guys put below. You can also reach out at the underscore Cavalier on Twitter and Instagram. I have a few other ideas for industry videos, but if you have any suggestions, please do. And until next time, gents, this is the Cavalier. Bow bow. Bow bow. Oh yeah. Bow bow.